Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we'll be talking about vertex colors and textures in Godot 3. In the previous video, we set up a basic vertex color shader. If you import a model that has vertex colors on it and you apply that material, you should be able to see the vertex colors right away. In this video, we're going to take it a step further and add some textures. For my setup, I've imported a new mesh, three planes with vertex colors on it. And although the end result that we end up having may not look too different, these meshes are all different densities. If you go to perspective and change this to display wireframe, you can see the different densities here. I'm going to apply my new material to this mesh, and we're going to apply the shader to this material. Additionally, I'm going to simplify this, and I'm only going to do four channels, black, red, green, and blue. I also imported 12 textures for this material. So the first thing we're going to do is set up the normal map. And we're going to use all of this setup except for the colors. We need textures for this. So we're going to look for a texture uniform. We're going to rename it, call this T, the texture, normal map, 01. And this is a normal map. We set the default to black. We'll copy this three more times. We'll rename each one to keep it consistent. We'll plug the first and the second one into the top. We'll plug the third one into the second and the fourth one into the third. We'll plug this into normal map. Now we'll come back over to the material and we'll make sure that everything is hooked up correctly. So we'll go to my textures, make sure one, two, and three are already hooked up. We'll put four in and this looks fine. So we'll go back to the vertex shader and now we'll set up the albedo. We're gonna move all of these out of the way, push them down, push them all the way down. We're gonna copy these, bring them up here and we'll paste them. We're gonna change each one of these to color and we'll rename each one of these. Plug that into albedo. Now we just need to hook up our masks. Plug X into the top, one into the middle, and Z into the bottom. We'll go back to our material. And we'll hook each one of these up. This looks good too. So we'll come back to our visual shader. Once again, we're gonna take all of this and we're gonna push it out of the way, all the way out of the way. Now this one's gonna be a little more complicated. We're gonna copy these, we're gonna paste them right here, right in the middle. We're gonna make a little more room. Now this is gonna be our AORM, our aiming inclusion, roughness, and metallic. So we're definitely gonna get more spaghetti wires in here. But for the AORM, these are just data. So we don't want a vector mix, we want a scalar mix. So for this one, we'll do the aiming inclusion first, and we need three of these scalar mixes. We're gonna daisy chain each one of these together into the top, and we'll just plug this into the AO right away. And then let's rename this, call it AO RM. One, two, three, and four. Now before we can plug any of these in, we have to break the RGB apart. So we need a vector, so we need a vector decompose. We'll make one for each of these, and we'll plug them in. Aiming inclusion, roughness, and metallic. We'll plug in the top AO, the second AO, third AO, and the fourth AO. Now we just need to add the vertex color masks. So black and red, green, and blue. And let's take a look at our material again. It looks like the texture's already slotted in. I did make this shader once before. So that's all hooked up. We'll come back to our vertex shader and we'll finish this off. Then we're gonna hook up the metallic and the roughness. So I'm gonna move, so we're gonna move the ambient occlusion, I'm gonna move the albedo further up and out of the way. I'm gonna pull the AORM back down. I'm gonna copy these three scalar mixes again I'm gonna paste them down here for the metallic and down here for the roughness. And then we'll hook up the roughness and we'll hook up the metallic. And then we'll go through the steps again. So for the metallic, we want the Y, for black and red, Y for green, and Y for blue. Pull this all down again so we can see it a little bit. Now we'll do the roughness. We'll plug the Z into the top for the red, we'll plug in the green, and then we'll plug in the blue. And the last thing to do here is to hook up the mass for the roughness and metallic. Now before I hook these up, if you zoom too far out in the visual graph, you won't be able to grab the pin sometimes. 
makes it difficult and you might end up grabbing the node instead. So what I do is I zoom in a little bit more and if you grab the pin with the left mouse and then even though it's a little awkward, if you middle mouse click and drag and push your mouse, you can move the viewport. You can move this viewport a little bit. All right, we're gonna hook up the mask now. So this is the red mask, the green mask, this is the blue mask. Pull this down a little bit. Now we'll hook up the mask for the roughness. It's the red mask, green mask, and the blue mask. And I'll just correct that Z. All right, so I think we have everything set up now. It does look like a spaghetti mess, and that's going to happen. But let's take a look at our material now. All the textures are hooked up but visually it looks like there's some errors still. So let's take a look real quick. For one, all of the AORMs, their types weren't set to data. And then our second issue is that we mixed up the metallic and the roughness. Now from here you can advance the network to the alpha channel and you can add another texture set. You go back to Blender or Maya and you change these vertex colors. Additionally, there's another person, Tomansky, who just released an add-on for vertex painting in Godot 3. I'll leave a link in the description for you to check them out. Alright guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.